Hello learners, today I am here to discuss lesson 17 production function from the module 7. In this lesson we are going to learn various concepts of production along with their relationships. We will also learn the fixed and variable factor of production and the reasons of operation of the law of production and the law of diminishing marginal product. So all the concepts we are going to learn in a detailed manner. Relationship between TP, AP and MP. The TP is total product. The total production is done by a given period of time with the availability or by using the all factor inputs. Average product is a per unit output which is produced by a single unit of a labor and marginal product is a change in the total product or addition in total product. By discussing the meaning of all three, we are going to discuss that how the three concepts are related to each other and what is the role of all three in the law of variable proportion. The relationship of TP, AP and MP, we can explain this with the help of law of variable proportions and with the help of this law, we will able to understand that how these three moves along with each other. The law of variable proportion can also be known by various alternative names like we can call it shorten law and we can call it by the law of diminishing returns also. Now we can have the meaning of law of variable proportion. This law explains it is a short term law. So the law of variable proportions in a short period production law, it is also called returns to a factor. In a production process, when only one factor is varied and all others are remain constant and more and more units of variable factor are employed, the proportion between fixed and variable factor goes on changing. So it is termed as the law of variable proportions. This law states that if you go on using more and more units of variable factor like labor with the various amounts of fixed factor like capital, the total output initially increases at an increasing rate, but beyond a certain point, it increases at diminishing rate and finally it falls. So this law initially called law of diminishing returns. We have some assumptions of this law under which the law operates. The firm operates in the short run. There is no change in the technology of production. The production process allows the different factor ratios to produce different level of output. So we have some more assumptions like all the units of variable factor are equally efficient. We will assume that all the units will perform e in an equal manner and the full substitutability of factors of production is not possible. So the law of variable proportion can be explained with the help of table and with the help of diagram also. So we will understand the tabular presentation along with the diagrammatic presentation. Before proceeding further, we will discuss that what this law states. The law of variable proportion can be explained with the help of table and with the help of diagram also. So we will understand this law in a tabular manner along with the diagrammatic presentation. So what the law states? According to the law, when we employ more and more units of variable factor with the fixed quantity of other factors and technology, the marginal product of the variable factor first increases and then decreases. In other words, with employment of more and more units of variable factor with a fixed quantity of other factors, the TP first increases and then starts decreasing. We will discuss the things in a table and diagram also. It means then in the short run, labor is the only variable factor. Return to labor or marginal product of labor initially increases but as more unit of labor are combined or employed, its MPP starts decline and 
may also becomes negative. We have three stages in this law. The first stage is increasing returns to a factor. The second stage diminishing returns to a factor and the third stage is negative returns to a factor. We are discussing these three stages in the detail manner. The very first stage is in this phase total product or TP increases at an increasing rate initially and marginal product of variable factor and labor increases. In the end of this phase MP is maximum. So this is the phase of increasing returns to a factor because in this stage both the things TP and AP are increasing. The second stage that is known as diminishing returns to a factor. In this stage or in this phase TP increases but at diminishing rate and MP declines but remains positive. But at the end of this phase MP becomes 0 and at this point TP will be at its maximum point. So this is the phase of diminishing returns to a factor. The third stage is negative returns to a factor. Why we call this stage a negative returns? Because in this stage MP becomes marginal product becomes negative. So in this phase MP declines and it becomes negative. Here the TP also starts falling. It operates from the level of output where MP of labor is 0 but subsequently becomes negative. Now we have a table, we can explain this law and all three stages with the help of a table. In the column 1 we have a land, we can see that we have only one unit of land as it is a short term concept. And the second column we have the number of workers which is keep on increasing at is a variable factor and we can increase the variable factor along with the fixed factor that is land. In the third column we have total product and in the fourth we have average product and in the next we have marginal product. Now we will discuss all the three stages with the help of this table. In the very first stage when TP is increasing up to the 21 the AP is also increasing and MP is also increasing and in the fourth unit of labor when TP is at 28 units. AP reaches at its maximum point and MP also reaches at its maximum point. But in the second stage when TP starts increasing with the decreasing rate and what was the behavior of AP and MP, AP starts falling and MP becomes 0. At the end of the second stage MP becomes 0. When we move further towards the third stage when MP starts becomes negative because of the TP is declining. So what we have seen in this table, then when we employ the various units of a variable factor with the fixed factor, the, these three concepts move in a different different manner. First the 3 increases then reaches at its maximum MP becomes 0 and in the last stage it becomes negative as it is the addition in the TP. So it totally depends upon the behavior of total product. Now in this slide we can understand this concept diagrammatically. We will also understand the relationship between TP and MP and the relationship between MP and AP. So we have the two axes. On the one x axis we have units of labor and on the y axis we have the out output. In the first diagram we have the total product curve and the second one we have the marginal product curve and the average product curve. The green color shows the average product curve and the red is being the marginal product curve. So we are now understanding the relationship between TP and MP. We can see that when MP is increasing up to point A, the TP is also increasing that is a part of stage 1 and after this when MP is decreasing after the point A we can see in the diagram TP is increasing at decreasing rate which is the part of stage 2 and at the end of the stage 2 MP becomes 0. We can see at point C MP is 0 and TP as its maximum and after this we can see that MP becomes negative and TP is declining which is the part of third stage. 
Now along with this we can also understand the relationship of AP and MP also. When MP is above the AP, we can see in the second one diagram, when MP is above the AP, AP is increasing, but when MP is below the AP, AP is decreasing and when MP is equal to AP, AP is at its maximum. So with the help of the diagram, we have understood the three stages and the relationship of TP, MP and AP. Now we can conclude these three stages in this manner. Like in the first stage, TP increases at increasing rate. After it increases at diminishing rate, it continues to increase at diminishing rate and becomes maximum. And at the last, it starts declining. In this slide, we can precise the all three stages. So in the very first column, I am explaining the total product. In the stage 1, it first increases at increasing rate and then diminishing rate. In the stage 2, it continues to increase at diminishing rate and becomes maximum. And the stage 3, it diminishes. In the second column, what is the behavior of marginal product? In the stage 1, it increases in the beginning, then reaches a maximum and begins to decrease. In stage 2, it continues to diminish and becomes equal to 0. And in the stage 3, it becomes negative. And in the third column, the behavior of AP in stage 1, it will first increases and continues to increase and becomes maximum. In stage 2, it becomes equal to MP or marginal product and then begins to diminish again. And in the third stage, continues to diminish but will always be greater than 0. Average product can never be 0 but marginal product will be 0 and becomes negative also. So that was the behavior of all three concepts, total product, average product and marginal product. So we can understand the various reasons behind the different phases of law of variable proportions. So cause of stage 1, in this stage we get increasing returns to a variable input because greater use of variable input makes it possible to utilize fixed indivisible factors more efficiently. Also to introduce a greater division of labor and specialization also, which leads to optimum combination of fixed and variable inputs. So in the first stage when the factors are underutilized, it is easy to increase the total product at a higher speed. But in the stage 2, when we combine more and more variable factor along with the fixed factor, total product starts declining. So the, because of this, we start getting diminishing returns. We get diminishing returns to variable input because in this stage, the proportion between variable and fixed inputs has crossed the optimum level or the optimum proportion between them. And a variable input such as labor has less and less fixed inputs to work with. Now the stage 3. In the stage 3, the variable input becomes too much relative to fixed inputs, which obstructs the production process and therefore result in fall of total product because marginal product becomes negative. And because of the behavior of marginal product, this stage known as the negative returns to variable factor. In the next slide, we can have the meaning of law of diminishing marginal product. The law of variable proportion is an extension of the law of diminishing returns to a factor. The law of diminishing returns to a factor states that as more and more units of a variable factor are employed with the fixed factors and technology, its marginal product eventually declines. So, we can have the difference between these two laws. The one is the law of variable proportions and the second is the law of diminishing marginal product. The difference between both the laws is that law of diminishing marginal product does not take into account the increasing returns to factor. According to this law of diminishing returns to a factor, the firm can operate only in stage 2 or 3 of the law of variable proportions. Hence, the law of diminishing returns to a factor is a part of 
more general law of variable proportion. So now we will study that what economists believe that what kind of production sectors have what kind of stages. Early economists believe that the diminishing returns to a factor sets in only agriculture as land was a fixed in this sector because land is a very important factor in agriculture industry. So it did not apply in the industrial sector as this sector continuously underwent technical upgradation. So however, industry can postpone the stage of diminishing returns with the technical advances as compared to agriculture sector. They believe that if technical advancements do not take place, there is no increase in the efficiency of the factor inputs. Then diminishing returns shall be applicable even in industry also. So according to the modern economists, diminishing returns under the law of variable proportions are universally applicable to both the agriculture and industrial sector as well. So we can quickly recap all such concepts which we read today. So first of all, uh, the meaning of this law that is the law of variable proportion which states that the additional unit of a variable factor are combined with the given level of fixed factor and technology. The marginal product of the variable factor first increases and then declines. We have read all three concepts and we have read the relationship of all three of total product, marginal product and average product that how they will move according to each other. We can have the recap of the relationship also of the both the concepts like TP and MP. When marginal product increases, the total product increases at an increasing rate. But when marginal product start declining and remain positive, what will the behavior of total product? It will increases but at decreasing rate. But when marginal product will become zero, the TP will reach at its maximum point as we have seen in the diagram also. And when the marginal product becomes negative, total product starts declining. So we can see that both of the concepts, total product and marginal product are moving simultaneously and affecting each other. So thank you learners. I hope you all understood the concepts which I have told you today.